Hello, my name is Niall and I'm from Respect Project. Um, today I'm here to interview uh, my local sporting hero, Keith Farrell. Uh, he's my Taekwondo coach. Uh, Keith, Hello. I'm going to start off by asking you some questions about your childhood. Yes. Um, so first of all, where did you grow up? In Uri. Yeah. I've been here all my life. And uh, what was your childhood like? It's very typical. I just went to school. Um, Walked around with my friends, played with the dog. Um, yeah. Um, I suppose the only disadvantage I have is that my uh, parents owned a shop, so we were made to work from no age. Um, the only advantage is it taught your work ethic and getting out of bed early in the mornings. So when you were in school, did you play any other sports apart from? Uh, the typical sports we played at school were sort of football and basketball and things like that. Um, but you know that was just sort of this. That's a long time ago. I mean, I was at school almost 40 years ago, so it's slightly different to today. There were fewer options to play other sports. It was just, you know, the main football and Gaelic, that was it. Um, and what school did you attend? I went to the Abbey Grammar. Um, did anyone in school like, make you interested in Taekwondo? Uh, well, strangely, yeah, schools where I actually picked up doing Taekwondo was actually advertised originally as Bushido. There was a poster for it in school and I went along and there was myself and about eight others at the start along with my history teacher. Um, so we all trained away for a period of time and uh, thereafter that particular course ended in the school. Classes continued then in the Bosco and Glen and various different places. Uh, I just followed the instructor around wherever he was going and kept going and kept training and loved it. Um, did you prioritise school or sports? Um, I didn't prioritise school. Um, I certainly did prioritise training. I mean, after school I went to Queen's and I spent more time practising Taekwondo than doing anything else. I originally studied physics and I was not a very good physics student. Then I transferred to engineering and was a marginally better engineering student, but not that great, but I ended up being pretty good at Taekwondo. And uh, what helped your interest in sport in school? Um, generally in school, I have to say that, you know, the ability to, to sort of, I studied quite a lot of science and maths, and I think that the interaction of Taekwondo and the use of physical force and how you apply it is certainly underpinned by the mathematics and the application of physics. And that may well have been part of the reason I did physics at A-level and then moved on to study it um, at third level as well. Um, so that sort of drive to understand how you could get more power out of yourself was certainly quite crucial to my understanding of what I did and certainly characterised my pursuit of training and how I was constantly looking for more power. Um, and uh, in school, like, what sort of subjects did you like, most prefer? Then? Oh, yeah, maths, physics and chemistry I did for A-level. Um, did similar... I did O levels at that stage, so again, I'm getting back in the dinosaurs in the black and white days. Uh, but yeah, no, it was mostly sciences. Um, I did do French, um, but that's really about the height of it. Um, due to your sport, did you ever have to like give up any free time with friends or anything? Oh yeah, all the time. I mean, you know, training was just a very much uh, you went and trained, you know, three or four days a week um, at the weekends. Um, tournaments, you were always going to, to various tournaments. Um, although, to be fair, it, lots of the people that you went with were quite close friends, so it didn't seem like you were making any kind of sacrifice because you were moving in a circle of people with like interests, and that made the training and the dedication much, much easier. Mm -hmm. And um, just as you were talking about the tournaments there, um, when you were um, like building up to the tournaments, did you ever have to like eat healthy? Yeah, I mean, making weight was always a crucial thing, and it's, well, I mean, you know, people that don't do combat sports don't appreciate just how hard it is to cut weight and to cut fluids, and, you know, I mean, ridiculously so. I mean, I've been to tournaments where I've seen people lose eight kilos in a day to make a weight, and, you know, so people dropping for their four or five kilos, fairly common, but, you know. I once watched a guy drop eight kilos and he was going for another six before the medics had to intervene and tell him, you know, that's just a beyond the pale. Um, but again, you know, it's uh, drying out and restricting your fluid intake. It's, I think nowadays, and as we move on, it'll seem to be more dangerous, particularly in light of all the concussion that's sort of growing. 
So being dehydrated and concussed, I think, will eventually turn out to be a very bad thing. Mm -hmm. But we'll remain to see. Did any of your friends like play in school or anything? Like, did you ever influence them to do Taekwondo? Oh yeah, loads of miles. Um, several friends came along and tried class at various stages. I had a cousin who trained, I had a brother who trained. Um, I had a sister who trained as well. Um, so at various stages, um, yeah, people did train. And again, even nowadays, you know, most of my family are all black belts as well. So I think I might have had a bit of an influence there. Was there any restrictions in Taekwondo that like you don't get through or just cool stuff? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no one sort of says you can or can't do it. There's certain things that are not good for you. Um, you know, over the last number of years, training's got less, um, how can I say it, rigorous. Okay, so some of the training methods we use are not as, um, how can I say it, you don't have to be quite so tough to stick in class. And that's not a bad thing because, you know, over the time, people have got fitter and flexible and ultimately are better at Taekwondo. Um, but I do miss that bit of toughness. Um, so the level of contact in terms of sparring is much less now than it used to be. There's still the odd tournament where it happens and we don't do the same level of destruction simply because it just causes broken bones and injuries. And I do miss it because it was a sort of full demonstration. But the reason it's more or less been restricted in class now is just simply due to the number of injuries that it caused. Um, so I can understand why that's happened. Uh, but I do miss it. And, um your career in Taekwondo, like, what was your favourite point so far? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, again, generally speaking, I, I moved from competing to coaching. And the time, literally from the day that I stopped competing and concentrated on coaching, we've never gone to a tournament where somebody hasn't won a medal. But prior to that point, with loads of tournaments where people didn't win medals. So I think the fact that I decided not to compete and actually concentrate on coaching improved the skill level, improved the standards, set a habit of winning, which is quite important. And that has continued through to the point where we've got people who've won the World Championships um, and you know, are sort of leaders in their field, and it's quite phenomenal. So I'm very proud, very proud of the people who've moved on to become world champions. Um, and again, you know, that influence you have, people like Jesse Jane, who sort of got to the final, Britain's Got Talent. Again, if you can inspire people like that, I think you're doing a good job. Do you have any advice for young people who might be looking to do Taekwondo? I think the best advice you can give to anybody who's looking to do any sport is to you know, find good quality coaches who are interested in training you in the correct skills and that you progress your skills. And if you get to the point where a coach doesn't know how to improve you anymore, then you find a new coach. And that you just keep training, keep good basic skills up to date and progress and enjoy what you're doing because if you don't enjoy the training you'll never progress and you'll never stick at it and dedication is one of the hardest skills that you can teach anybody and uh, in your career do you like, see yourself continuing doing taekwondo or would you think of doing any other sports uh, linked with martial arts well it's strange you ask i mean i've done lots of i've dabbled in lots of other martial arts i mean i've had a go at Jiu-Jitsu, Taijutsu, Haidan Gumdo, which is sword fighting. I've taken lots of courses in self-defense. I've trained with lots of people throughout it. Um, and the beautiful thing about that is that, you know, Taekwondo is what I do. It's the sort of the path that I choose to follow. But all those other people have managed to influence me in certain ways, which I can bring back and it enriches what I do. And ultimately, you know, we do a martial art, which is not really a sport. And what you're always looking at is what suits you best, how you can improve yourself. And again, as long as you remember, the goal is to try and generate power. If you can find a better way of doing it or a more unusual technique, um, it, it all enriches what we do. And, you know, again, some of the people that I've seen who've been very brilliant, there was a particular guy called um, Choi Hong. Well, uh, um, a master Choi came over and he was absolutely fabulous uh, because he was in his 70s and he could kick better than I could. And I just found that phenomenally inspiring because I was going through a particular period where I was adjusting to some... Um, disability that I developed and the fact that someone like that could come along in 70 and sort of inspire you I could kick better than I could I and I can kick pretty well and I just found that absolutely invigorating and refreshing and you know and he told some wonderful stories about making a living as a street fighter in Hong Kong and you know you think those things are made in films and there was living proof of it um, so yeah people like that are really interesting and um, just as you're talking about influences and like uh, was there anyone else who influenced you to do Taekwondo? 
Um, not particularly. I mean, it was just the fact that it was made available to me and I was allowed to have a go at it. Um, I find it the beauty of Taekwondo is it's an individual sport. It's not a team sport. So you're very much judged on your own ability. So you don't have to be super fit, you know, because you can make up, well, at that stage, you could make up for it other ways. If you're going to tournaments, if you were tougher or meaner or a bit more skillful, you could defeat an opponent. And I love that tactical element. So it wasn't just a turn out and, you know, match someone on size and cycle. You had to have a brain to survive and do well. And I think that's a really sort of, beneficial aspect of what we do and that it's not just the physicality it's also the mental aspect and getting the two to interact is particularly um, engaging and continues to be to this day. Moving on to achievements then, uh, is there any like small achievements that you would find like a, a clear stand out to you? Yeah, every time I teach someone who gets to the level of a black belt, now I have trained several hundred people to their black belt level every single time someone gets to that i am absolutely chuffed firstly for them but also uh, the ability to sort of take someone and keep them interested for sort of somewhere between three and five years to get them to achieve their black belt is very very rewarding um and again seeing my students progress and do better than me again is quite useful because it shows that you know i, I maybe can't kick as high as them or as fast as them but i can train them and inspire them and keep them going and i find that very rewarding have you ever been to any like, different countries due to your sport, like competition? Oh, God, yeah. Um, we have been, well, I suppose, been to, well, you go down south quite a lot, but, you know, um, England, America, Canada, Holland, France, um, Switzerland. I've been around. There's been a few. Okay. <laughs> I, no doubt there'll be a few more as we progress, but yes. And um, out of all them countries, like, what, what sort of country do you think stands out the most like, to, to do Taekwondo? Um, probably Holland, simply because everybody is so tough. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that, uh, I mean, my, uh, my favorite story is that at the World Championships, the, in the heavyweight final, in Holland, being refereed by a Dutch referee, this guy sort of ducks under a turning kick and just hits the guy right in the face with a hook punch and puts him out cold. And then the referee, now normally you get disqualified for excess contact, and the referee just turns around, holds his hands up and goes, the guy walked on to the punch. And uh, I thought it was an interesting refereeing decision, but it just shows you how tough those kids are, that they will you know, go to that and they will call that a victory. Oh, well, I suppose it has to be having students win the World Championships. Um, I mean, in terms of Taekwondo, it doesn't get any higher. We're part of a level where you go to World Championships where there's sort of 3,000 competitors uh, over 15 rings, and yet we come away with sort of three or four people who managed to win the World Championships. Um, I mean, well, most recently, Jesse Jane got silver in sparring, gold in patterns. Um, there's several other people who all placed in the World Championships. And that's not uncommon. And again, you think the number of people competing at that level, um, we still produce champions. That's very powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, you said you're talking about World Championships. So have you ever been to a World Champions Championships where you've won yourself? Oh gosh, no. I've never been that. I suppose a talented amateur is probably the right thing. I mean, I've done the training and stuff like that, but you know, um, and I have the concussions to prove I was there but no I certainly wasn't as good as I, I I'm a much better coach than I am a competitor mm -hmm. and, um, you said you're talking about coaching as well um, how many uh, years have you actually been coaching? I started Taekwondo in 1983 and I started taking classes within about a year or two of that so since about 1985 I've been coaching um, I've got numerous qualifications. Uh, one of the beautiful things about being part of an organization is that you know I've since been trained to actually train tutors and I'm now quite um, skillful at doing that as well. So as time's gone on, not only have I got all the abilities to coach myself, but also to train tutors. And I think that's quite a useful skill as well. And um, can 
any picture of yourself that you wish you were going to in the future? Or um, yes, I mean, it's, it's, uh, lots of people get jaded, but one of the beautiful things about martial arts is you never actually know it all. Um, there are different things happening. There's progress being made in terms of people developing flexibility and power and speed. Um, we're always improving, we're always finding new methods. Um, one of the other interesting things, again, now that I have a bit of age and a bit of perspective, is you can see training methods going back to how they used to be done. <laughs> and, uh, so some things start off being the way it's done, then they become dangerous, and then they come back to being safe again. So, um, yeah, I, I can see myself continuing to go and never stop learning. Uh, that's that's part of what we do. It's part of what we've always done, and I'm you know very happy to to do that. I think one of the beautiful things about martial arts and just all sports in general is not only do you have to compete, but you can coach, you can practice, you can help out. There's lots of other avenues and how people can contribute. So you know, as I say. You know, I've seen people who are involved in the club who are in their 60s and 70s and continue to take an active part and inspire others as well as, you know, putting back into what we've done. And uh, how many of your trainers are you coach for right now? Uh, at the moment, I coach four days a week, so, um, you know, it used to be a lot more, but nowadays I, I tend to coach about four days a week. Uh, thanks very much for coming down today again, Keith. Um, I've learned a lot about you that I actually didn't know Keith. so much. <laughs> You're very welcome now. Thank you. Thank you.